last one for this uh, classwork example. Hopefully you've already watched the videos for one and two, getting a chance to practice the button pushing for re-expressing. Don't forget, you can pause at any time, right? To make sure you're practicing uh, doing the button. So I went ahead and typed in my uh, X for distance and my Y for candle power. So I'm saying the distance uh, from the light is going to explain the candle power. So uh, in this case, I'm going to just check to see the original scatter plot, right? With list one explaining list two. So zoom nine, let's see what it looks like. Okay, very much a distinct curve, right? Um, starting very high and then getting lower. So let's go through the re-expression, right? The first one is going to be squaring those Y values. So I'm gonna hit second list two and square it. All right, so let's check out what happens after squaring all the Y values. All right, again, hoping this will actually be linear. So now I'm doing list three in my Y. Graph, zoom, nine. Uh, nope, definitely not, maybe even worse. Uh, so that's not gonna work, so let's do the next one. And again, if you're wondering where I'm going here I'm, or how I know where to go, I'm just using the ladder of powers. Right, again, I referenced this on the previous two. Um, examples, so I just squared the data values. We already said the raw data doesn't work. So let's do the square root of those Y values in list four. So this is gonna be the square root of list two. All right, so we'll go to stat plot. Let's change that to list four. Now we'll graph it, hoping for something more linear. Okay, getting better, still a distinct curve, so it's not gonna work, but definitely, definitely, definitely getting better. So that's good, seeing some improvement. Next up is the logarithm of the Y values. So let's go ahead and take the logarithm of those Y values. So this is gonna be equal to the log of list two. All right, so I'm gonna plot this one to see what happens. And as I mentioned before, it's not gonna be this one, but you know, when we do the chapter 10 quiz together, you're gonna to see how most of the time it's just gonna be the logarithms. All right, that's definitely looking better, but still a distinct curve. So let's see if we go to the next one here in the ladder of powers uh, where I have the reciprocal square roots. So that's one over the square root of list two. All right, that definitely, that log one looks so much better though. Still a little bit of a curve. So I'm gonna write on this one for list six, I'm gonna write one, let me do this in parentheses. Let's do one divided by the square root of list two, All right? That's the reciprocal square root. All right, and let's see what happens. Does that work? Enter, okay. Let's check out this scatter plot for list six. So that's gonna be second number six. And now I graph and zoom nine. And that looks very linear. So I'm gonna stop here, run the regression, and hope that in my residuals plot, I see no patterns. This was list six that ended up working. That's the winner, if you will. I'm gonna store it in my uh, Y1. So Y bars function stored in Y1 and down to calculate. Okay, so there it is. Let me kind of pause this for a second. So turn that off. Now let's do the residuals plot. So remember to keep the X the same. I haven't changed the X at all actually in any of these. So now I'm in second list and number seven is the residuals. And so now we have zoom nine, hoping for a no pattern or something not really like a pattern. Excellent, that's no pattern, awesome. So now I'm ready to actually use this linear regression. All right, so let's write it out now. And again, we're doing one over the square root. So my model is going to be one, oh, let me change back. One over the square root of candle power, I guess I could just write intensity, hat, equals my y-intercept. So this is interesting. So this is saying negative 5.539 to uh, times 10 to the negative fifth power. So if I put that up here, negative 5.539 times 10 to the negative fifth power. So remember how to do scientific notation is you go five times one, two, three, four, five.
0.5. So there's the decimal, so 0 0.0000, then the 5. So negative 0 0.1, 2, 3, 4, and then the 5. I'll just do it like that. Plus my slope is 0 0.022. Again, not that worried about um, this rounding because I'm going to use the calculator to do any type of modeling. E times the distance. Okay, in feet. So let's predict the, I'm going to show uh, the one that is at, let's just do 30 feet. So I'll do this last one and then I'll do you know, quicker the one in the 12 feet. So to do the 30 foot, it's one over the square root of candle power hat equals negative 0 0.000055 plus 0 0.022 times 30 feet. So I'm going to do y, so uh, vars, y vars function, y sub 1 is where I put it, and I want to uh, evaluate this at 30 feet. Now keep in mind when it spits this out, this is not the answer. This is equal to 1 over the square root of the answer. So 1 over the square root of my candle power equals, let me write it out for you. Okay, equals 0 0.651. So if we're going to actually get the answer here, what we need to do is I'm going to move candle power to the right-hand side, divide 0 0.651 to the left-hand side, so 1 over that will equal to the square root of the candle power, and then I want to square both sides. So I'm going to do 1 over this number, Again, this is still not it. This is equal to the square root of it now. So to get rid of that square root, I'm going to square both sides to get 2.3. It looks like it's rounding. So 2.4. So my answer in this case, I think it was 30 feet we're doing. So 30 feet was 2.4. Confirm? Yes, 2.4. Okay, so that's how to do that. Let's do it a little quicker for 12 feet and 1 foot. So second. Oops, sorry. Just bars y bars and now I'm evaluating it at 12 feet and I'm going to do the same work I just did so 1 divided by that and then I want to square both sides so square it which gives me 14.8 and finally at 1 foot so evaluating this at 1 foot doing 1 divided by that, and then squaring it to get just candle power by itself, is 2135.6. Okay, so if we look at that compared to the original table, even the 30 feet looks like it kind of makes sense. You know, again, that's extrapolation, so I want to avoid extrapolating, you know, whenever I can. Uh, but the 12 is actually within my range of data that I started with, right? The two feet to 25 feet. So that 12 feet, if I'm gonna you know, pick one to be most confident about, it would be the 12 foot one because it's actually in uh, within my data range. The one foot is close, but it's still technically extrapolating because I started with two feet, all right? So that's the process of uh, re-expression. We'll get to do some more in class together, but I just wanna see, uh, just wanna show you how you can do all this in your calculator, it does take a lot of time, a lot of button pushing, you know, a lot of chances to mess up and I want to, you know, caution you, don't stress too much because on the AP exam, they're not going to make you re-express in the calculator. They'll just talk about, um, you know, show you the scatter plots and the re-expression. All right, good luck.